The position that St. Kitts and Nevis has taken is fully consistent with that which is taken by the heads of the CARICOM group, um, group, as well as both the United Nations Charter and the OS Charter. The policy explicitly states that there must be no intervention in the affairs of a member state without the explicit request of that member. Put differently, if St. Kitts and Nevis is to intervene in the affairs of Venezuela, that request must come from Venezuela. That has not happened. And therefore, we start off with that, being the, the OS being in violation of uh, the principles of its own charter, as well as the UN also has the same um, principles. So therefore, on that basis, we have abstained from voting rather than taking sides. Taking sides um, explicitly implies that if indeed we are not encouraging dialogue in this zone of peace that we've created, the logical extension of this is going to war. And no one of us within the region wants to have this, especially in our tourist-centric region. So it is an issue that continues to be troubling to us. The logical extension of that is, of course, an attempt by the government of um, the incoming government or the, um, the interim government to place itself as a member of the Organization of American States. The, um, the incoming government is an interim government. It has not been elected by anyone, and we have enormous difficulty with that. The difficulty, again, comes from the charter that is explicitly stated in, by the OS as well as the UN Charter. It says essentially, at least in the case of the, um, the OS, it says that we should not place someone who has not been elected, who has not been elected in a seat in the Organization of American States unless that person has at first been reviewed by the foreign affairs ministers of the region and also kicked up to the next higher level of the General Assembly. None of that has occurred. So as far as we're concerned, the proposal to place Juan Muaro, the interim president, in the seat of the UN is essentially a, uh, an illegality. Voting in favor of that issue is essentially voting for an illegal action, which we will not do. So we are vigorously opposed to that. Now I should point out that the CARICOM is split on this decision, that we have um, Jamaica, who has taken a somewhat different view, the Bahamas has taken a somewhat different view, and Haiti has taken a somewhat different view. And more recently, we are he hearing noises coming from St. Lucia that they're actually likely to side with, um, with the U.S. on this particular issue. So it remains very troubling. We are hopeful that if St. Lucia holds strain and takes the position that Carrie Com has taken, we believe that the resolution will not pass and that uh, the interim one Waro will not be placed on the... So that's still up for grabs. It's in discussions right now, and we're certainly hopeful that St. Lucia will um, you know, hold strain, if you will, and not side with the U.S. in terms of um, siding with the opposition. So that the, those are the two main issues that we're confronting. And the votes, as you point out, um, you know, we're very close to, um, you know, to the 18, getting an 18. If we get 18 votes, then, of course, we'll be able to stop the action from going forward. So that's where we are right now on that particular issue.